Good morning and welcome to a new episode of the EFFF Talks. I'm Paola Rusconi, Investment Manager of the European Energy Efficiency Fund, and today I'm pleased to have with us Marco Baresi, Director of Marketing and Institutional Affairs at Turboden. Turboden, just as a matter of quick introduction, uh, is a company of the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries Group and one of the main players in the production and management of technologies for the heat exploitation. This is the very core of what we're going to discuss today. Hi, Marco. Hi, Paola. Thank you for the invitation. Good morning. Uh, thank you for coming. So you're also Vice President uh, of the European Geothermal Council uh, of the Italian Association for Cogeneration and Waste Heat Recovery. So there is lots we could cover and, and talk about. However, today, especially given that we hear politically a lot of uh, talks and uh, thoughts around how to restructure uh, the uh, heating system and make it more efficient uh, for Europe in the years to come, but sooner rather than later. Uh, I'd like to go deeper with you on uh, how to bring sustainable and efficient heating or cooling uh, to our cities, to our homes, through, through the technologies you are an expert about. Uh, so, if you can give me just a quick uh, overview of the technologies we are talking about and what are the main relevant ones to connect the production sites uh, for heat recovery to, to the cities through district heating, just in a very simple term. Uh, okay, Paola, let me spend a few words uh, about uh, Turboden uh, that could be helpful for the this discussion for this uh, podcast. Uh, Turboden is uh, a um, company specialized in uh, um, design, manufacture and maintenance of uh, organic ranking cycle system. Uh, Ideally suitable for distributed generation. So it means uh, to, to have low temperature heat, low to medium temperature heat exploited uh, uh, to generate power and, uh, uh, and the heat at different level. Um, we have the possibility to start from multiple sources, for example, solid biomass uh, or geothermal or waste heat uh, from the so-called hard to abate industrial processes, uh, like, for example, cement, steel and glass. Um, the um, explanation of uh, waste heat recovery, uh, we uh, estimate that the waste heat recovery is an efficient way to valorize the excess heat. Uh, then otherwise is wasted in the atmosphere. Uh, these wasted represent currently a CO2 free sources. Um, in very brief, uh, uh, you have in one side, you have wasted at different temperature level, the so-called heat supplier. On the other side, the users of heat, for example, district heating or industrial company is the so-called user. Uh, due to the different level of temperature, often is not possible to use the heat recover directly, for example, to the district heating. We have different uh, range of temperature, starting from 20, 30 degrees of uh, typical heat from sewage treatment, or a data center, the temperature is higher, or industrial processes where we have a various stream at different temperature level. Uh, the temperature of operation of district heating on the other side is uh, various. Uh, we have uh, district heating development in the 18 and 19 with high gas temperature of operation. Uh, the recent one, the so-called low temperature district heating, have lower temperature of operation. How can you can match both uh, uh, from one side wasted recovery and from one other side the users of district heating? It's interesting that the starting point is the delta of temperatures you have on site, where there is a uh, heat producer and uh, in and the end of the value chain, a heat consumer with different temperatures. Can you give me an example of uh, a project where you had different players uh, sourcing uh, the, this type of project? Yes, Paola, you can better understand the picture with a concrete example. Uh, I have a project in a steel factory in the north of Italy. Uh, it's a manufacturer of high quality steel for automotive and special application, and it is located in the north side of the city. 
is a city of 200,000 inhabitants. Uh, and um, this is a unique situation because uh, since 2016, they have a waste recovery system installed, recovering the heat from uh, the hot gases residuated from the primary circuit. So it means high temperature and uh, uh, extremely high um, availability of uh, waste heat. Uh, we are talking about 100 degrees and high flow rate. The steel factory, in fact, is called hard to abate uh, and uh, is similar to other hard to abate uh, sectors like cement, glass, uh, or so on. To give numbers, the 10 megawatt thermal waste heat uh, recovered um, fed the district heating operated by the local utility during the cold season, providing a heat for 2,000 families. And uh, uh, on the other side, is converted in power during the hot season, generating uh, more or less 2 megawatt electrical power through uh, the ORC turbo generator, mainly for self-consumption. Uh, this is a way to reduce the electricity from the grid, saving money in this period, uh, particular of crazy cost of electricity. Uh, the electricity produced is equivalent to the needs of uh, 700 uh, families. And by using a matrix of today is equivalent of 1.7 million cubic meter of natural gas saved. And it is impressive uh, because uh, this uh, action is done only by recovering uh, a waste heat. So something that uh, otherwise is wasted in the atmosphere. But this is the first part of the story. We are talking about the high temperature, high flow rate, uh, uh, the second part of the story, uh, second part of the project that will be put in operation in the next months, uh, will allow to recover additional waste stream from the secondary circuits of the steel process. The secondary circuit uh, is used for cooling the, um, the electrical furnace and residuate hot water at 775 degrees. So extremely low compared to the primary circuit. Uh, on the other side, we have the district heating network of the city that need temperature in the range of 95 degrees to 120 during winter. In this specific case, the suitable technology to apply is the industrial heat pump. So for primary circuits, they, they, they recover the waste heat to generate power with the ORC. From the secondary circuit, low temperature, low flow rate, uh, we are able to apply an industrial heat pump to fed district heating. The working principle of large heat pump is similar to the domestic heat pump for heating purpose. Uh, so basically you inject the electricity to heat pump to increase the temperature level from a low temperature to a suitable height one. Uh, but lower the heat leap, higher the efficiency of the duty, the, the so-called COP, the coefficient of performance. So at the end uh, of this um, investment, this uh, steel company will have uh, We'll, uh, we'll be able to valorize two different waste streams and uh, we'll be able to increase the sustainability of this steel industry and the integration with the city, giving an extra flexibility and also giving two additional revenues, one from the electricity, from the power, and one other from the uh, delivering the heat to the district heating. Okay, this is interesting because we see that um, what is... Um, a resource unvalued before the heat which is produced nevertheless to the industrial cycle becomes a resource and uh, on one hand saves money for for the company itself on the other hand generates additional uh, streams of revenues through the injection in the dc heating network and that there are technologies which are able to exploit the entirety of the heat available at the different temperatures. So we talked about ORC for the conversion of heat electrified to produce electricity and uh, the heat pumps to take the lower temperatures and transform them in heating for the DC heating network. Um, I, I see that there are countries in, in Europe which are more advanced 
uh, in this type of uh, projects and solutions and some others which are less advanced. But all in all, this is a, uh, a type of application that we don't see too often or that for sure we would like to see uh, more and more. What do you think are the barriers and, and the blocking points to, to go really hard on, on these type of applications? Yeah. Yes, it is correct, Paula. Currently, the wasted contribution to district heating in Europe is not so relevant. But uh, the Energy Efficiency Directive uh, under revision give a strong role with wasted in the future energy efficiency, energy efficient district heating by 2030 and 2050. So it means uh, basically to uh, reduce the use of fossil fuel um by using for example more renewable heat and more uh, waste heat uh, so um but there are currently barrier uh, not technological from my point of view because uh, from the technology point of view is important to continue r d and innovation uh, in order to uh, to increase efficiency lowering the cost uh, the so-called learning curve uh, Paola, think about what's happened with uh, uh, photovoltaics, for example, installing gigawatts of power. We have gone um, from cost of million euro megawatt to thousand euro megawatt, the so-called learning curve. So uh, we need to do installation to reduce the cost uh, and to improve the technology. But the main barrier uh, is... Uh, uh, the, 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 the economic competitiveness of this uh, solution. Uh, let me give an example. Um, industrial pump feasibility is directly connected with the cost of electricity. Uh, so you need electricity to increase uh, the heat leap from the supplier point of view to a user point of view. More the delta T, less delta temperature, less the efficiency. Less efficiency means uh, more electricity needed. And uh, what is efficiency from a thermodynamic point of view is less from an economic point of view. Uh, so it's, it is relevant that policy still continue to promote this application and also will support uh, it in the transition. Um, an interesting point and an interesting path uh, forward, um, towards this, uh, this transition uh, uh, happened uh, uh, days ago by the launch of the European Commission of the Repower EU package. In, in Europe, a strong acceleration of the electrification of heat was boosted by the Fit for 55 package under the Green Deal. But this was on July 2021. Uh, on May 18, so a few days ago, the EU released the Repower EU. Repower EU is a, a, a way to reduce dependency on Russian fossil fuel and to going deeper in uh, uh, save energy, diversify supply and quick substitute fossil fuel by accelerating Europe clean energy transition uh, and also a smart combined investment and reforms. This uh, package, uh, when will be implemented in the next months, uh, will be a boost uh, for, uh, for the introduction of this kind of technology, in my opinion. So you already saw measures or actions in Repower EU which can address the difficulties of uh, waste heat recovery and, and this type of projects we're talking about. Yes, waste heat uh, recovery is explicitly mentioned in the Repower EU package. And also, uh, there is uh, a strong pillar related to the save energy, save energy and energy efficiency, mainly uh, in, uh, in buildings, private building, but also in industry. Um, so it will be relevant to, to have this contribution for the future development of, uh, of this technology, as I mentioned uh, before. Um, Another barrier, you asked me a barrier, another barrier is the, um, this kind of investment are capital, invest, capital intensive. And uh, so I see actors uh, as uh, Triple EF, for example, your fund, uh, as a key actor to support uh, transition in terms of finance uh, and to promote best practice. 
uh, also to inform what we are doing today with uh, this this postcard, for example. Uh, but we need to cover the gap between the limited knowledge on the match between heat pump, for example, on this kind of technology and process demand with a key decision maker, industry, consultancy, utilities, and, and so on. Uh, um, if I have to give you my own view on, on the barriers I see from an investment uh, side, uh, the interconnection between the different infrastructures which are involved in this type of project. So the district heating networks attains a certain uh, group of decision makers. Uh, why is the private side, the, the industrial side, for, in the example you made, but we know that the generation of heat can come also from ad hoc sites and uh, production sites which are dedicated to feed uh, the DC heating network on one hand and the electricity grid. But the connection between production and exploitation goes through basically a partnership between uh, private entities and uh, public actors. And this is the, the, the key uh, barrier, I, I would say, from my point of view as an investor, uh, I have been able to appreciate over the last years blocking this, this type, the true development of this type of, of market, which, is, which has a, its own shape. So it's in place and it's going. It's uh, valued 60 billion uh, a year of, of revenue, we see it recovery. So it, it it has substance already, but it could be much more than than what we see right now. If only we could uh, have a better engagement between the policymakers, the local administrations, and the private players, uh, producers as you are, and uh, industrial sites as well. I do hope that the the engagement we see and we appreciate through the European Green Deal, uh, through now Repower EU and all the measures in between, the action plans in between, will favour the these type of synergies. Yes, I agree with you, Paola, um, about the, one of the main difficulties is to match uh, the, the, from one side the, the utility and the energy supplier uh, that uh, are able, for example, to recover the heat or to do energy efficiency investment. And from the other side, the company, the, the industrial company that has a, a continuous process, uh, but uh, uh, that could be subject, for example, to economic crisis or so on. Uh, we have done a, an interesting um, work in the last months uh, with the EFIG, the Energy Efficiency Financial Institution Groups, uh, uh, created by the European Commission years ago, in order to define, for example, a de risking uh, scheme and also to promote, uh, for example, a risk insurance scheme, a public risk insurance scheme in order to cover these, these different um, these two different approaches, uh, more or less uh, in order to cover the energy performance contract uh, uh, guarantee. From one side, you have the, the industrial player that uh, manufacture for uh, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 hours uh, per year. And so the residual weight is available uh, from these industrial processes. On the other side, you have to guarantee the utility and the energy supplier that uh, have to do, for example, the investment in district heating and so on, so must have a sort of guarantee of this uh, flow rate uh, uh, during the day here. If you are an industrial player and, uh, for example, there are some period of crisis or so on, you are not able to guarantee the supply of heat to the district heating. So one of the key points is to match these two different uh, uh, approaches. And for example, a risk mitigation scheme or a way to guarantee this energy performance contract could be a solution, as we have discussed a lot uh, during the Energy Efficiency Financial Institution Group, the EFIG group uh, at European level. I see. So it's a matter of uh, finding a way to cover the risk of lower volumes, lower activities, on the private side, so on the, on the industrial side, versus the investments a certain investor has to make to realize the infrastructure and guarantee the offtake uh, of the production. 
Yes, this is key. What you see from the industrial side and from the utility side, this is a point for this kind of investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, said regarding the infrastructure itself, so realizing these heating networks to make this heat arrive to the homes and to the houses of people who will make use of it. Do you see this uh, as, a, as something which comes attached easily or? Yes, uh, from the technological point of view, uh, there are no barriers uh, to, to connect. Yes, of course, it's not simple. You need the engineering and you need the technology, but uh, there are clear examples uh, of uh, projects already realized. So it could be done uh, without a big problem. Yeah, okay. I agree. I think it's mostly a matter of political commitment and local administrations equally committed to uh, authorize and realize these type of connections. Yeah. Uh, let's close with your very desire. If you only could make a wish and ask something, the one thing you would like to have from uh, a policymaker to really unlock the capabilities and the, pot the potential of this market, what would you ask? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I've seen in the recovery and resilience facility um, some interesting uh, point uh, to, to exploit this, this opportunity. Um, but in my opinion, uh, and we must be most ambitious uh, in, uh, in the level of energy efficiency targets, for example, in industry, and uh, allowing money for, do, for doing this, this kind of investment. For example, in Germany, Austria, Holland and Denmark, uh, they are pushing a lot. Other countries are uh, a little bit more conservative. I believe Repower EU will boost uh, this uh, application wider. But to do, to do this kind of application, you need uh, a, a strong support from the policy and also from the financial point of view. So, uh, this is the, the, the question. Please uh, valorize this waste it uh, because uh, uh, it represents a smart way to mitigate uh, energy prices uh, and gas crunch this period. Yeah, yeah. and it's affordable. Affordable. The yeah. technologies are there. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it makes economic sense, and it's a true investment for. Yes, and if I can add something, uh, also sure. is important uh, uh, also to um, promote. Uh, a strong exploitation of the EU manufacturer. Uh, so only by um, pushing for this, the result will be full. Otherwise, if you will depend from foreign import of technology, we will have reached the goal only partial. It's a strong opportunity, but uh, we have to design correctly this, this opportunity. And uh, from the energy efficiency point of view, we have a lot of uh, SaaS story and uh, a lot of uh, in important uh, companies, uh, manufacturing companies in, uh, in Europe. So we have to valorize it. We couldn't end better uh, our talk. Thank you very much, Marco, for being with us. I'm pretty sure uh, I will knock at your door again to mm -hmm. talk about the lots of other things you are an expert about and you cover in your activity and which are related to energy efficiency and sustainable energy in Europe. Thank you so much. See you next time. Have a nice day. Thank you, Paula. It was a real pleasure also from my side. Thank you.